Hi, I'm Tim Clossy. I'm the Director of Neuro Oncology at UCLA. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here today to, to, to be with you. I wanna start with um, an understanding of how brain cancer research works at UCLA and how we do it. Uh, this program has been around for about 30 years. And from the very beginning, there wasn't a lot of researchers that were available. And it was clear that we had to provide materials for researchers. That meant that we had to provide models for, for brain cancer. We had to provide tissues. We had to provide uh, outcomes for patients. And this really provided a, a unique situation where we thought that the patients needed to be a part of the cure for this disease. And the way that we did that was by collecting all of the data on patients in a database, including their imaging, their tissues, and then taking their tissues and creating models with them. This provided an infrastructure for researchers to come in and to do work and to be able to come up with discoveries. So now at UCLA, we have a, a, a full cohort of researchers studying a number of different types of features of how to uh, uh, target and destroy brain cancer. It's really because of this that we've been able to take um, our funding from the NIH, our funding from uh, different uh, donors, and to be able to apply that funding to new approaches. The goal has always been to have new discoveries. And UCLA has been great about this. And our brain tumor program has a number of discoveries that are able to move from the lab into the patient. And we work very hard to make sure that we have the patient in mind when we're doing this research. So we will design all of our studies on animals or, or other basic evaluations in the lab to be able to translate that into patients. This is uh, one of the important things that's happened through one of the funding mechanisms, which is the SPORE. Uh, and this is a, uh, a, a, an award that comes from the NCI. There's only six groups across the country that have one of these for brain cancer. And we're one of them. And we take our discoveries that we have and we try to push them into the clinic. This is called translational research where we applied, again, the same principles in the lab into the clinic. That could mean that we would know a good dose to give to patients, give them the drug, and maybe use imaging to identify, are we having the effect that we should be? Maybe have to remove the tumor tissue to show whether or not we're hitting the target of interest in any way. All of these things are critical for allowing us to move that drug forward to change the way we're treating patients. So this transition, this translational step is very critical and largely not paid for through any funding. So this is what we do a lot when we have donors come and they want to uh, provide funding. Many times we're looking to take the, the discoveries that we made in the lab and transition them into the clinic. These turn into clinical trials. And I think clinical trials are really important because they give us the definitive answer about whether a drug is providing a benefit to patients or a group of patients. And although we have homegrown trials, just like I said, we start from the discovery setting, bring it into the clinic and continue to move that forward. We also have then a number of, uh, of in industry partners who have various drugs, who have various approaches, and we're involved in working with them to be able to take on those approaches and work with them to develop those trials and run those trials. The end goal of all of that is to be able to identify whether or not there's a strong enough benefit to allow pay, to, to show that patients are living longer. And we do this through a statistical process where we have enough patients who are getting the treatment and we have patients who are not getting the treatment. And we could show that there's these strong benefits that are occurring. And if we could show that strong benefit, then these drugs will be now available to all patients. 
and we will be changing the outcome of the disease for all patients. Probably the perfect example of that is with IDH mutant gliomas. <laughs> we were involved in working on some of the basic discoveries of what IDH to IDH mutation does. And then we were pivotal in evaluating the early clinical trials using advanced imaging and other approaches to identify that we were clearly seeing tumor shrinkage associated with these IDH inhibitors and working together with the company, making the decision to go forward with the phase three study. And that phase three study ended up being positive. So now there's the opportunity for FDA approval and everybody to get that drug. So what started off with is just a small number of people, maybe a total of three, 400 in the end received that drug. Now many thousands will be able to receive the drug and, and get the benefits from it. In the end, we, we face our patients in the clinic and we have to do everything we can to help them. And our first goal is always to try to put them on a trial. And we wanna put them on a trial because we want them to be a part of that process that leads to an answer for all patients. And that's what I was speaking to about, that all of the patients in the end need to benefit from a particular therapy, but we need to show that it's beneficial. So having people be on a trial gets us there faster. We don't have enough trials to treat every single patient. And so that means some patients don't have the option to be on a trial. And this is really, really difficult because although our standard of care sometimes can provide some, some reasonable benefit for, for some patients and depending on the aggressiveness of the tumor, sometimes we have substantial benefit, but other times we have very limited benefit. And we have, we're, we're stuck in this situation where we can't offer a clinical trial and the standard of care is not great. So what is it that we can do? We... We really are guessing at this point. We're doing our best. We're trying to provide our patients with some opportunity for a benefit. And so we make this big jump. And that is that we try to identify something unique in the patient's tumor that maybe we could treat today through some off-label therapies. The biggest problem with off-label therapies is that they were developed for something else. They were not developed for brain cancer. And so we're making this leap and this jump to say that we're gonna try it even though it hasn't been developed for brain cancer. And there's a, lot of, um, there's a lot of opportunity for error in that setting, but in the end, we're also just trying to do our best to provide our patients with options. So this is something, of course, that we do for all of our patients. Uh, we want to try to provide them with the best opportunity, and we try to utilize and understand the specific features of their tumor that might be amenable to different off-label therapies, uh, and we will go ahead and do that for our patients. The problem with that, in the end, is it's not going to change the outcome for all the patients, which is really what we're, we're uh, hoping to do. So that's why it's so important for us to get back to the research, to create more clinical trials, to have more shots on goal, more opportunities to change this disease. And if we can do that, then we will be helping all patients are you know, known to be experts in the field. And so people come to us first, among others that are, that are you know, highly capable centers, to run those trials because they know that we're providing uh, expertise that will allow for the best evaluation. I mean, it's probably the, you know, when you really think about like, what should somebody ever come out to see us for some reason, the biggest reason would be for a clinical trial. That would be the most obvious reason to come. The second might be, um, we are experts. We do know how to take, we do know how to identify complications. We do know how to get through these things. We do know how to identify whether there's true tumor progression or pseudo progression. You know, we have expertise in these areas that allow for patients to get better care in the end. But in a trial, we get the benefit of you're trying something. I don't know whether it's better than standard of care, but 
people will learn and other people either will be able to get the drug or not use the drug because it wasn't beneficial because they went on that study. UCLA has done and the Brain Tumor Center has done is not only come up with you know, basic discoveries and opportunity for uh, specific targets, but actually developing therapies. Uh, Dr. Liao created a vaccine that went to a phase three study. Uh, we have developed an EGFR inhibitor that gets into the brain that is an important target for glioblastoma that is in a clinical trial now. There's a strong focus at UCLA, not just to study the disease, but to look at how we can solve this problem. And we can only do that through therapies. And we're not afraid to try and develop new therapies and to come out with new approaches. That's one of the things that I think we're uh, very well known for. And because of this large university that we're in with so many different types of uh, abilities and disciplines that can be applied, approaches such as CAR T cell therapies are being developed. It's really uh, such a unique environment to be in because we're focused on solving a problem, and that problem is brain cancer. In the future for our brain cancer research at UCLA, donations would continue to go forward to laboratory evaluations for discovery. That means identifying new targets and then creating therapies against those new targets. These are all laboratory-based approaches that require funding in order to, to one, come up with the discovery and two, come up with the unique therapy. The only way we're going to change this disease is by coming up with new therapies. And we want to be, and we are a leader at this, and we want to continue to be a leader at developing new therapies for brain cancer.